Hi you guys, welcome back inside my grow room. This is Indoor Hydroponics and I'm John, your Indoor Hydroponic Test Dummy. So, hey guys, uh, this, grow, this grow room is starting to get pretty full up. I'm starting to get grown in quite a bit. And if you're a hydroponics fan, then this video will be kind of a bummer because a lot of what's going on in this room right now is spring starts, man. And I'm getting excited for spring. Okay, because traditionally I've mentioned it in my prior video and I'll mention it again here. I am my first go-to choice of growing plants, vegetables, that type of stuff is right in the soil, man. That's what these plants were bred to do. And you know what? I'll tell you what. That is the, that is the number one way to grow. You've got free energy in the sun, free, free water with the rain, harvest it, use it. And uh, it, it, it works to our advantage, okay? But I have really, really enjoyed growing indoors over the winter. My wife thinks I'm absolutely crazy for setting this up and doing all this. But you know what? She comes down and she takes a look in here and she looks at the growth and what, it, what we've eaten out of here this year. And she says, that's pretty amazing. And my wife is not easily impressed. So that has uh, been pretty cool. Now listen, what do I got going on real quick in here? I've got 72 tomato starts going, four different varieties. I'll do a video on that. I've got 72 onions, which uh, are Bianca Di Maggio, which are a flat Italian tomato or, uh, onion, good for roasting, right? They're really sweet. Um, so I'm really excited to get those into the ground here in a month, hopefully, if the snow melts. Um, I've got some dill, herbs, I've got a cool little cracky strawberry plant going here that I started from seed in October. 72 bell pepper plants. If you're just catching this video and you haven't seen my landscaping with bell peppers video, I'm doing an eight part series on that, okay? So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check that out. Also, I forgot to mention in that video that I will be, of course, setting up a playlist on YouTube for those in case you want to bypass all my other nonsense videos, right? And just if you want to just kind of keep up with that, it's going to be a cool little series. I hope it all works out. My fingers are crossed. I think I'll do the best I can for the 72 bell pepper plants, and I'm going to leave the rest up to nature, right? So uh, hopefully we get some good weather this year, not like unbearably hot, but also not a cold summer, right? So we need the right environment because growing bell peppers in Michigan is hit or miss, right? I mean, it's kind of a tropical plant. And then uh, I got some different forms of lettuce going. I got, what, six different lettuces going in here, man. I got lots of stuff going in here. And we've already hit the three-minute mark, and I haven't started what I had initially started out to do, which is to give you an update on day 60 of the San Marzano grow. Hey, so behind me is the three San Marzano plants. Um, and you know what? They have really started to kick in, all right? And... Uh, some good green leafy growth going in they're bushing out they're getting some good clusters starting right some good flower formation starting and that's that's the one thing to this point that uh, I was a little worried about okay so uh, between day 30 and 60 and we're at 60 right now but between day 30 and 60 from transplant I got some flower clusters, right, and they were weak and a little bit spindly, and not all of them opened up, and they started to drop, and I'm thinking, oh, man, what am I doing wrong here, right? Uh, you know what? The plant, in my opinion, uh, well, it could have been my fault, but in, in my opinion, the plant wasn't ready to produce tomatoes yet. It, was, it just wasn't ready, okay, and the plant just shut them down and dropped them except for one or two here and there but I so I have some tomatoes started they're going they're green they're just developing on those initial flower clusters um, but it's only hit and miss it's like one or two here or there okay so it's not in clusters yet like a like a San Marzano should uh, be developing tomatoes good news the good news is, is I've got good, strong flower clusters forming right now. And uh, they're all opening up, they're dropping pollen, it's awesome, right? So what I'm going to show you on this video, I'll keep it as short and as clean as possible uh, because it's easy for me to ramble on and on and on, and I apologize for that. 
What I will show you is uh, how about we do a little bit of pruning, right? Uh, and I'll show you what I want to prune, okay? Uh, some of the leaves on the bottom of the plant are starting to brown up a little bit. And, you know, when people see that on their tomatoes, they're like, oh my God, what's going on, right? It's not a big deal, okay? I'll talk about that for a second. In the last three years that I've grown tomatoes, all of the bottom vegetation starts to brown up when it starts to get old. Oh my God, the plants are only 60 days old. Why are my leaves brown? Listen, man, they serve a purpose. The tomatoes are fast growing animals, man. And when they're used up at the bottom, all the energy is going up to the top. And it, all it wants to do is just keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. Oh, and by the way, produce fruit. Those are the two things it wants to do. It wants to produce, it wants to keep the end or the tip growing as fast and as far as possible. And it wants to keep the fruit going, okay? It's serving two purposes. It's trying to get big. It's trying to spread itself out. And it's also trying to develop fruit. Why? Because it wants to drop seeds. Why? because it wants to carry on the species, right? So that's, I mean, that's what the plant is trying to do. So when the bottom vegetation has served out its purpose, when the energy's been sucked out of it and it's been sent up to the tip of the plant, prune it off, it's okay. You're not gonna kill the plant, okay? Second thing I wanna talk about is pollination, all right? How do I pollinate these in here? Uh, I did a video on some banana peppers, so check that out if you haven't seen that but I do a close-up of how I pollinate uh, peppers and it's the same principle here. I'll do a close-up on this and show you how I pollinate them. Hopefully they're ready to drop some pollen today and uh, we'll, get a, we'll get some tomatoes started today, okay? Because you gotta pollinate them. There's no bees or insects or anything in this room, all right? My wife will frown upon it if I bring bees inside the basement. She's not giddy on that, all right? So, and she runs this house, so <laughs> I just stay out of her way. All right. Um, let's just quick talk about one other thing before I flip the camera around, get behind it, so you don't got to stare at my big ugly face and head. Um, I want to talk about where, what have I kept the nutrient concentrations at. I've kept them pretty stable, okay? I've kept them at about a thousand parts per million, um, and it's a combination, half and half, of Dynagirl Grow and Dynagirl Bloom. I want that extra phosphorus and potash and whatnot. I want that in, in, in the solution because the reason is, is, is I want good flower formation, okay? And the, like I said, the first two clusters uh, just didn't work out. I put that bloom in, it kicked it up. I also want to keep the nitrogen going, uh, you know, someone, Brock Hughes, hey buddy, he commented on my first, uh, or on my second video about, hey, you're kicking over to bloom so early. And I think he, he made a very, very, very valid point there, and I took that to heart. So I am still going with the girl, okay, because we need the nitrogen for the growth, okay. So thanks for the uh, shout-out, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it, and believe me, I've still got the girl going, all right. But I did make some, some bloom because I can't help myself. All right, pH is running around 5.8 to 6.0-ish. Okay, I check it every once in a while. I've been changing the nutrients every two weeks. As uh, the levels come down, I just top it up with fresh water so there's not like um, drastic pH changes or anything like that. So every couple days I'm topping it and I'm making, making sure the water levels are high on the, on the uh, DWC here. And uh, there are, they are on a lighting schedule of 12 on 12 off, okay? so. Nothing's changed here. I would like to run them at 18 hours, but you know what? The electric bill just gets too high running at 18 hours. I'm just going to be flat out honest, all right? So uh, we run them at 12 on 12 off, and, and I can keep this grow room at about 50 bucks a month with pumps and lights and everything running, and that's somewhat reasonable to me, okay? Because I'm getting, still getting food out of here. So let me flip around. And uh, we'll take a peek at the plants. I'll show you what I'm going to chop off, do some sucker and stringing. Okay, guys, here's uh, the first plant right here, and we'll give you a quick look all the way up. Good leaf growth, good, nice and green, not too much leaf curl going on. Uh, if you do remember from my second video that there is a pretty drastic side bend going on here, so it's uh, these plants are about 36 inches probably in total length but they're only about, I don't know, 28 to 24 inches high right now. But there is a side bend coming out of the bucket, and then I started uh, bringing it up the string. Really good growth going on right here. 
uh, and I'm really enjoying uh, watching these babies grow. Okay, so here's plant two. Okay, and let me jack this thing over here, and let's take a look here. Okay, and I'll just give you a quick. Pretty cool, right? All right. So what am I going to trim off? I'm going to show you what I'm going to trim off. Okay. Let me flip the camera around and, well, this, these are some good examples right here. You see that bottom growth right there? Uh, a couple of reasons here. Those leaves are probably done. Uh, the energy is being diverted, like I said earlier, to the fruit production and to formation, uh, new growth at the top of the plant. All right. So, you know, I do this in my summer garden. I do it uh, outside and I will do it in here. When these leaves start to get old, uh, they're not, they do not have any disease. I don't have any bug problems going on in here. They're just getting old. And the thing is, is they're at the bottom of the plant and they're not getting good uh, light from this grow room, right? They're not getting good light penetration as they would with the sun outside especially. So, you know what? They've served their purpose, uh, they've aided in the production of the plant, and now it's time to start trimming off some of that old foliage. Because if any energy is being diverted to the bottom of these leaves right here, to these leaves, to try to save them, I don't want that to happen. I want the energy going to uh, further growth and fruit production. So I'm going to trim uh, a lot of this old uh, growth off. And believe me, it will not hurt the plant at all. In fact, it'll just do it a favor, okay? So um, it'll also increase some air circulation going on in here, uh, which is a good thing. One more thing I want to take a look at here is, of course, the clusters, okay? So here's a good cluster going on right here, and I'm digging it, okay? Check that out. See, now that's a good, healthy tomato cluster right there. I've got some flowers going. A lot of them have already closed up again uh, because they've bloomed. I pollinated them, and uh, tomatoes are going to start to pop out from there. And that's a good, healthy one. That's going to be a good cluster of tomatoes right there. Now, what I was saying in the little introduction is, is yes, uh, I was able to get some, uh, a, like a tomato to form, okay? on these, what I'll call, I guess, premature clusters, if you will. I don't know what the proper term of that would be. Um, here's another one right here. And so I got like one going on those. But like I say, man, the, the flowers dropped on those, and that wasn't... I was starting to get worried, but now I'm not so worried. That's going to be a good cluster there. Um, that's going to be a good cluster in there. And I'm liking what I'm seeing right in here. Okay, so I'm getting some good blooms going on now, and that's making me uber, uber happy. So I also got to do some suckering in here. If you tomato Nazis out there, you probably saw some suckers in there. So uh, I guess I got to get to work. Okay, let's do a little bit of pruning, and I'll just do a quick snap on this. Ready? Get it as close to the vine as possible. Uh, without nicking the vine and blop, all right, and blop. Oh, no, you did it. Yeah, I did. It's okay. They'll be just fine. All right, let's get into pollination. I got a close-up on one of these open uh, flowers here. And what we're essentially trying to do is we're trying to get the pollen to drop. And if right over here, you probably can't see this right here. Yeah, this one right here. That's If you can't see it, there is a to tomato forming already in there. And there's a tomato forming on this one as well. So the easiest way to do this uh, is to take yourself a vibrating toothbrush, put it on top of the flower, and let's see if we can get some pollen to drop. Yeah, I'm getting it to drop. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if the lighting's very good, but uh, a stream of pollen came down from here. And as soon as that happens, stop, you're good to go. These things have been pollinated. It's dropping the outer pollen to the inner stamen there, and once that happens, we're gonna get ourselves some tomatoes uh, forming. So. 
I do it with every flower that opens up and you know what germination is like a hundred percent doing it this way uh, this is almost as good as a bee working on this thing all day long man so pretty cool method here and it's a must if you're gonna grow indoors I, I would say if you want to get good production okay um, so that's how I pollinate Banzai! there it is this is all the old growth uh, created a lot of airflow in here I'm gonna turn the fans back on turn the pumps back on these babies are going to be nice and healthy. Didn't hurt the plant at all. Um, they have been bonsai uh, And here, you, you can get a good visual here of that side bend, right? All this is going to do is shoot that energy up to the top. I can't s repeat that enough. So this is cool. Growing them single stem. Let's come back at uh, day 90. So uh, 30 days from today. And hopefully I'll have some clusters going. And... Uh, have some good fruit production kicking in okay so thanks for tuning in guys like subscribe uh, follow along uh, I will have uh, of course this is on a playlist for San Marzano so again thanks for watching take care guys bye